Okay, Let's, uh, we're, we're dealing with, uh, it says churches, but it refers to the synagogue. We'll mention that in a minute. Uh, during, I believe, here the first half of the tribulation, remember we've been raptured up, God resumes his dealings with Israel. And these churches, I believe, are during the first three and a half years here that I want to mention that, okay? Revelation 2 3 talks about the seven local churches in the early part of the tribulation. Revelation 21 is about the church at Ephesus. This is not the same church at Ephesus that Paul addressed. And it gives you the verses there. Revelation is prophecy, so it, it's a synagogue, whereas Paul's church is mystery, that's the body of Christ. And John was just mentioning that just a moment ago, that they're not the same churches, but they're the same towns. And, and I told him that if you remember Acts 18, right next to the synagogue, Paul started the church at Corinth. But it was not the synagogue, it was the body of Christ he started right there, okay? So it's not the same as uh, you see uh, back in Pauline epistles, okay? Uh, verses one, the commendation, verses 1 through 3. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, that's the me angels, the messengers, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, that's the churches. So it's the messengers in the churches. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. So he gives the first church here, he gives them commendation. He brags on them a little bit before he rips the rug out from underneath them, okay, <laughs> in a sense. But he tells them what they are doing right first. These believers will hang, will hang in there, and stand against evil by maintaining a high, holy standard of living. They are radical for their faith and won't embrace false preachers or apostles. How they test, T-E-S-T, -E how they test to see if one was of God was by the word of God. John writes about this. Notice that he's writing to the Jews, of course, but notice what he said earlier on. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, that's an important thing I said. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So. They tested if a person was true or not when they were <coughs> speaking forth the word of God by did they believe that Christ had come in flesh? What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, real simple, it means that those people who come over here, that they see this and they test the spirits and everything, they will look back and they will believe that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, did come and dwell among men, was crucified and rose again. But they will recognize, believe that Christ the Messiah had come. Right. They will believe that here. Those who don't believe this, they're not of God. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I remember I looked at those verses many times and, I, and it just didn't click with me until I started rightly dividing. <laughs> then they begin to say, oh, okay, this makes sense. Then he comes to reproof, the warning. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent 
and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, now he said, I give it to you for this, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, 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 I thought so, Nicolaitans, I'm watching TV too much, huh? the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, here it says they worked hard for, everybody turn their phones off, okay? They worked hard for the faith, but something else was becoming first place in their heart. Their heart has to maintain gratitude, appreciation, and closeness to who Christ is and what he has done for them. And plus they'll have the tribulation influence coming down on them. You know, I think... Uh, uh, they were radical for their faith, but somewhere they had left the most important thing, in a way. And isn't that what legalists do today? Mm -hmm. They've been saved, a lot of that. They love the Lord, but they begin to think about their rules and regulations and preferences, and they begin to focus on that <coughs> rather than on the person of Christ. And they kind of leave their first love in a sense, don't they? And so anyway, uh, he commends them. He says, but this is your problem. And one of the reasons I put what I did there in that little sentence is that the love of Christ constraineth me, Paul said. If you fall in love with Christ and love him, you want to please him. Right. And uh, your focus will be him. And so when he says you've left your first love, the priority of your faith, which is me, uh, he said they were standing up for what they believed, <laughs> but they had left that, and that, that can happen to us real easy too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you always just be grateful for what he's done for you. That will help prevent that somewhat. Notice number two, and they are asked to <laughs> repent now, the word repent, yes, there is sorrow for failure, but it means to change one's mind mm -hmm. and get back to their high level of love and zeal for Christ. Uh, there's a lot of people that promote repentance as you have to turn from your sin, make him Lord of your life, and live for him. That's not... Repentance is changing the way that you are thinking in your relationship with Christ. And when you fail, you fail the Lord, of course, but you're changing your mind. I did what was wrong, but I'm going to try to do what's right in your thinking. It's not your outward behavior, but it's inside your mind, I believe. Right. And... Uh, conviction of repentance. Well, conviction, of course, but repentance is dead. Uh, uh, conviction is guilt, you know. And I think as a Christian, I know all my sins are already forgiven. Right. And so there is a sorrow that I let the Lord down because I know it was my sin that nailed him to the cross, but I don't have to ask him for forgiveness today. Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's already forgiven me. Now, there's nothing wrong if I confess in the sense that I'm agreeing with God that I've sinned. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I'm telling God, God, I know that it was my sin that nailed you to the cross. I know my sins are already forgiven. And I want to thank you for that. And I know that I did wrong here. But by your grace, please help me to have strength to go forward. And, you know, just move on. But you... If you do confess, you confess in the sense that you know your sins have already been forgiven. Some people say, well, that means you can have a license. And, of course, that's not true. Uh, if you're truly saved uh, and you love the Lord, you want to live for Him the best that you can live. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
I don't serve him because I have to. I serve him because I love him. That's right. And there's a difference there. If it's a, if it's out of duty, then it becomes a human behavior effort, rather than from my heart I'm going to please him. And this is what his word says: pleases him. And I try to live that the best I can. Okay. Okay. After that rabbit, here we go. Uh, if no repentance, they would lose their church. And he says, and I come quickly. Uh, it's in the tribulation. They don't have much time. Because he's not going to mess around a whole lot. So uh, he's going to come quickly. The word Ichabod it means the glory of the Lord hath departed. Okay? And when God's not there, you're just going through the motions anyway. Okay. Nicolaid. Did I say that right? Right. Nickel. What? Nicolation. Nicolation. Nicolaid. Nicolaid. This is a false religious system that tries to seal in, conquer, and place others under their authority in SUV submission to its ungodly system. What religions would you say they try to conquer and make you do what they say is to do? Okay, Catholicism? Islam? Okay. Even Hindus, Hinduism, uh, they're mean. <laughs> they're supposed to be peace and all this, you know. Uh, they're killing Christians left and right over there. It's unbelievable. And, uh, but anyway, it's when you try to conquer somebody and make force them to do what you say to do, like our government. Okay, notice. It is veil, V-A-A-L. It is Baal or Babylonian religion that began but that yeah, that began back in Genesis. Antichrist will use it to control most of the world. The way this is done is by setting a class of priests, clergy that divides the people into two classes of people. The first class are those who have the A-U-T-H authority like the Pharisees, scribes, and leaders. The second class are those who have no or little authority but only do what they are told to do. The top class sets up the traditions, <laughs> rituals, and creeds and then E-N enforces obedience to what they say as the only way of salvation. You know, the Jews had Judaism. They had the correct uh, religion, faith, in a sense, early. But they began to go by their oral traditions and creeds and so on and leave the very word of God and begin to trust in the oral say, oral, I can't speak not oral sayings, of, of uh, what? Uh, the fellow leaders and rabbis and people like that until where I've said before they developed fence laws around the truth. And if you got through one fence, you wouldn't get through the next fence because they had put up their preferences around them. But what they had done, they had left the truth. Right. And they were following their fence laws. Like a lot of Baptists. <coughs> Hello? Amen. No, I didn't get an amen on that. Amen. <laughs> it used to be that way. It's kind of changing a little bit today, which I'm grateful for. Okay, the true believer will hate what God hates and stand up against the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans will claim their apostles have authority over the circumcised believers and church, the second class people. 
But the kingdom gospel saints will take God's word and D.I.S. discover the Nicolaitans are an evil counterfeit. And that's an understatement. Their system will be at its peak during the tribulation. Okay? Question. Who, what, is this organized religious system starting in Genesis and culminating in Revelation 17, 18? Antichrist will use it to help him control most of the world. It is the mystery Babylon religious system. It is the oldest religion that continues to exist. Now we're going to look at that a little bit tonight, okay? Because I think it fits the context here. It originated in Genesis 10 through 11 in Babel, where the kingdom of the Babylonians was established. You know the story of Nimrod, Tar of Babel, and so on and everything like that, right? And they were in Shinar, in Babylon, Babel. Now notice what I say here. There are characteristics of this religion in the Bible. It is introduced to Israel through the tribe of Dan and eventually is called Baal worship, B-A-A-L. You remember when the, when the tribes split that in you know, Ephraim sometimes, uh, the northern tribes and the two southern tribes, Judah. Yeah. So that is why in Revelation, the tribe of Dan is not sealed with the 12 tribes to become the 144,000 witnesses. Isn't that interesting? God did not allow that because they started this religion and led a lot of people astray. You remember uh, they developed their own religious system because they were jealous and they were fearful because the temple was in the southern part in Judah, Jerusalem, and they uh, thought, thought the people from the north would move down there to be close to the temple. So in order to prevent that from losing their members, in a sense, <coughs> they created their own religion up there so people, they, you know, people could worship up there and not have to go to Jerusalem. And that was a great sin, okay? And they begin to, by the way, they begin to mingle with all the other people, and they became called, they became, the, how do you say, they were called, anybody know? Samaritan. Samaritans. Right. Half Jew, half Gentile. They begin to mix so much and worship this false religion. Okay? Okay. Notice Dan is the source of satanic influence for Baal worship to get a foothold in the nation of Israel. And by the way, let me just say that Satan is always trying to get at Israel because he wants to stop the line, the seed, from going through what God had prophesied would happen. Okay? Judges and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baal, Judges 2.13, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Baal is the male deity. Ashtoreth is the female deity called the Queen of Heaven. Have you ever heard that phrase before? <laughs> the Queen of Heaven? We're going to look into that now. Okay? Notice some characteristics of this religion, the Nicolaitan. Judges 17 and the man Micah had a house of gods. That's a problem there. He's a Jewish man. And made an ephod, a terror, <laughs> and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that was right, what was right which was right in his own eyes. Now that's a problem. 
when you start doing what's right in your own eyes. Every man hath turned unto his own way. Uh, trust the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So if you forget God, which they did, they begin to create other gods. Isn't that amazing? And then he, then he says uh, here, uh, everybody just about had their own religion, not by God's word or Joshua's plea. You know, later on, I mean, they, they, they get it, you know, or they did. Uh, from Joshua, he says, you know, you need to serve God, but you serve whoever you want, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he made a plea for the people. Micah set up his own church, synagogue, or temple, and made a house of gods, plural. And I put in their idols. That's what these gods are. They had little idols. The ephod, this was a robe to wear priestly garments. The teraphim, this was small images, idols. And I put on there a cross. <laughs> you know, a lot of people put a lot of stock in the cross, that, you know. They, when they kiss it, they do different things, don't they? Huh? Or they got, who is it, Christopher on their dash? Uh, I, this is true. I was coming down Whitener Road here one day, and this car, uh, it was that slow, there was traffic, and then the car came by, and he must have had 30 statues on his dash. <laughs> Little small statues about that. <laughs> I said, well, if they keep you safe, he's, he's safe. <laughs> priest. Micah had a real ephod, teraphim, and priest, his own son to start his own religion that is a counterfeit. It looks somewhat like the real thing. You know, just because today people say Jesus Christ, God, doesn't make them good Bible believers yeah. or save people. Uh, Mormonism, they use Jesus, <coughs> they use Christ, they use all kinds of things, but yet we know that it's not according to truth. And uh, they have their own Bible, the Book of Mormon. And uh, they will hide, hold that higher than the scriptures. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, I think I was reading it where they had in it I think it was 25,000 King James Bible words. There's a lot of copying going on <laughs> in the book of Mormon. Anyway, I just was thinking that. Notice what happens when a true Levite shows up. A Levite, by the way, they are the, what of Israel? The priests of Israel. And there was a young man of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, he sojourned there, where Micah was. The man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father, and a priest, and I will give thee ten shackles of silver by the, by the year, and a suit of apparel and thy victuals. So the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. They not only had priests, but also religious titles, religious titles for their priests. The title was Father. Now this is Micah's bell worship, okay? They called him Father. Number two, Jesus said to his disciples, but all their works they do, for to be seen of men, they make draw their 
of phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. The religious to be seen, having pomp and long robes, they love ceremony. Matthew 23, 6, and love the uppermost rooms at feast and the chief seats in the synagogue. They have favored positions, places, status. I always liked the movie Godfather. And when there was a, a, a big attraction, big, I love the horse and bed, but when they had a big attraction, uh, they have all the dignitaries there, and it would always be uh, the cardinals and those individual people that were there, and uh, the bishops and everybody. Verse 7, and greetings in the markets, and they be called a man a rabbi, rabbi. Not mainly called by their name, but by their title. In Baptist circles, it used to be, and I know from personal experience, I, I shared with my Sunday school class, that they would always call you reverend. Mm. Sam Carmichael, when he sees me down in yeah. Martinsville there this past year, had to play my school off anything this year, but he did say, hey, Reverend Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, they like, I'm not saying that's correct, okay? I'm just, but verse 8 and 9, but be, be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Christ says not to call one father in a religious or spiritual sense. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, father, dad, whatever. It, you know, in your life experience, but in a religious, spiritual sense, don't call a person your father. And because there's only one, and he's in heaven. Number three, where would Israel get the knowledge, idea, I-D-E-A, idea, to call a religious leader father? Well, remember where they, Israel, had spent 70, 70, oh, 70 years. The answer is in Babylonian captivity. Nebuchadnezzar took the holy things, the vessels, from the temple and fused, F-U-S-E-D, fused them together with Babylon's religion. I should have said religion, it's plural. That united into one all religion of Baal worship. Daniel would not participate, of course, but most of the captives of Israel did not do what Daniel or the three Hebrews did. <laughs> they didn't stand up for the true God like Daniel and the three Hebrews. So Baal worship has a type of Old Testament priesthood and they called their priest father. Have you ever heard of a religion that does that? <laughs> Uh, now this next one, just to make a point, is Jehu, he's trying to entrap these Baal priests to kill them. So that's the story. Notice that Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal, and he did a little, his wife mainly, Jezebel, but Jehu shall serve him much. He's feminine. Now therefore, call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. And then drop down verse 22. And he said unto, them, uh, unto him that was over the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. By the way, that entrapment worked. He killed them. <laughs> now notice, they wore vestments or long robes showing their titles. 
Have you ever seen the inauguration of the Pope, by the way? Mm -hmm. And you see the different colors of all the robes that all the people have? Mm -hmm. they have the, those are titles of their importance, of how far they climb up the ladder. Mm -hmm. so I miss that. Yeah. Number two, this was a trap by Jacob. But the point is to see their bell worship characteristics. And these are Jews. Jesus said in Mark 12, 38, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing, that's robes, okay, and love salutations in the marketplaces. Mystery Babylon in Revelation 12 has a golden cup. Her colors are purple and scarlet. She has priests, which are called Father, and wear long robes called vestments with titles on them. Do you know of a religious system that identifies, I-D-E-N-T-I, identifies with these? And of course we do. And it has a bell system flavor to it for sure. Amen. We can say that. And by the way, I've said before, I, I've had uh, three sisters uh, who were Catholic, okay? And I know they got saved before, before they went home being the Lord. So, uh, well, two of them did. One still kicked. <laughs> <laughs> She's grateful for that. I know that this is not new. But it is the oldest religious system. Example, just quickly, 1 Samuel 5, and the Philistines took the Ark of God, that's the Ark of the Covenant. They defeated him in battle, and can you imagine that? Took the Ark and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And we know, by the way, that they came in the next day and, and the statue was on the ground. <laughs> they set it back up there. They came in the next day, his head and his arms are all broken off and everything, okay? So that, because of the Ark of the Covenant, presence of the Ark of the Covenant was there. Now notice that verse 5. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. Dagon is a fish god. Okay? It's a fish god. Have you ever seen one in a long, in a long robe, tall pointed hat with an open mouth on the end of it, have you seen some of the hats that the, the, the priests wear at the Catholic Church? And it has an open mouth, okay? Uh, I say there, that's fish gods, that's the fish god's hat. Isn't that interesting? See, Catholicism is a master at fusing together other, what? gods and other religions and bringing it into their own and having somewhat of it as a part of the total. They are terrific at that and have been. But that's a fish god. First Kings 18, Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt you between two opinions? And by the way, you know, they had Ahab the king Yet Jezebel, his wife, who worshipped Baal, of course, and so the king worshipped Baal somewhat, and so they had prophets to Baal there. Okay, that's where they all came from. Uh, how long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, there he is, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. <laughs> Elijah set up a contest or challenge with the prophets of Baal to prove who the true God was. 
Notice the prophets of Baal. The fact that they're in Israel there, and God says, let there be no other gods but me, and they're having statues and idols of Baal, supposedly, and all these things going on. Can you imagine what God is thinking? Huh? It, it would have been awful. And then, and the contest, who can bring fire down from all oh, and burn up the sacrifice? And then, and they, Baal, prophets of Baal, cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Do you know anyone that would go to this link in penance, P-E-N, in penance for God to do something they want? And that's a big part of penance within the church of Rome. And I think uh, Martin Luther is a classic example of that. He used to go up and down the steps until his knees were bloody and the more blood he could shed and, and or they would, they will, what do you call it, flock, flock themselves? Yeah. yeah, themselves until they bleed and stuff like that to get a hold of God in a sense and have his favor. Uh, but I, I love the next part, what happened? And it came to pass, when midday was past, they started, here's midday, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening, and now it's evening time, and there was neither voice, nor any answer, nor any that regarded. In other words, they got zilch. <laughs> Amen? They didn't get anything from God. And uh, I think it's Jeremiah, he said, you can Talk all you want to to that idol, but he's not going to answer you. <laughs> you can have all of you want. They're not going to. They're not going to talk to you or do anything for you. Matter of fact, you remember Paul when Paul says, "You know, y'all are shook up about eating meat that's been offered to, uh, been blessed by an idol, whatever." And uh, he said, "An idol is nothing." That's right. You know, I mean, yeah. it's nothing. It's just a piece of stone or wood. That's all it is. <laughs> Another example, just uh, notice, this is an interesting one though. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and pastorals, answered Jeremiah saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the yeah. queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we, when we did that, we had plenty of victuals, of food and so on, and supplies, and were well and saw no evil. There wasn't any consequence, only blessing. What time is it? I'm just curious. 22. 22? Okay. This is 580 years before Christ. Jeremiah thing. It is talking about the female deity in Baal worship. A growth, popularity, and prosperity are in this religion. So prosperity preachers, <laughs> yeah. they... Uh, they just didn't invent this thing, did they? Uh, it, it was all the way back. The mystery Babylon, mother of harlots, is not just Rome, but it is sprouted into other religious systems. Even PRO, Protestantism, has been tainted by Baal's religious system also. But yes, Rome, I should have said major manifestation 
of Baal worship. And boy, they're going deeper and deeper. Right. Uh, it's unbelievable how strong, and even the Pope has come out and said several times lately he, that uh, he denies the creation event and <coughs> believes in evolution. And uh, he also has said that Islam and them, uh, we worship the same God. Isn't that amazing? And so, uh, but they're going to get together before it's over. Right. They just wouldn't. Jeremiah 44. Then these women say, But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things that have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make her cakes to worship and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Now notice, the point I want to get is, not the story itself, they burned incense, a type of prayer. I remember I had my uh, brother-in-law's funeral, and uh, he was Catholic, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he wanted to be a priest until he met my sister, and uh, his brother was a priest, and so I had the service at, in Beach Grove there, and they had a, he was Irish, and they had a bunch of Irish Catholics there. And uh, the priest was next to me, and the priest said to me, you want to go first or afterward? I said, no, you can go first. And uh, so he, I, I want to know what I need to say, okay? <laughs> so he goes and he has the incense. You ever smell that incense, by the way? We went over to Carol's brothers a uh, few year over in Ohio, and they belong to not Catholic Church, but it's a Greek Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. And boy, as soon as you walk in, the incense it just hits you, yeah. and it's in your clothes, everything. You can't get rid of it. And uh, but anyway, he was doing that, and, and my brother said he thought he was going to wash the makeup off of my brother-in-law. <laughs> I mean, he just had him all wet. He just had his incense going like that. That didn't mean anything, but I thought it was good. <laughs> but they burned a lot of incense, okay? Type of prayer to her, having drink offerings of blood. Is that enough? Now just follow me on it. And have cakes, wafers. Psalm 16.4, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their names into my lips. And so uh, it's a possibility here. Just continue to follow. They also have a posture that they follow. First Kings, yet have I left me 7,000 men in Israel, all the knees which, now get this, have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Okay? Hosea, when Ephraim spake, and represents Israel, by the way, spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver, and idols, and he's talking about Jews here, and idols according to their own understanding, all of it, the work of craftsmen, they say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Uh, they had a problem then, as soon as they came out of Egypt, didn't they? They brought their gods with them. They have images of idols and kiss them. Have you ever seen anyone kiss a statue? S-T-A-T-U-E. A statue or C-R-U crucifix as an act of worship? They showed statues over in Europe 
where people have kissed the feet of those statues so much that their toes are gone and working on their feet now. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's true. And uh, they kiss those statues and do everything and uh, baseball players. Everybody. You know, they have the crucifix. And uh, when they hit something, they take it up. They kiss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that what they did? Yeah. Isn't that what they did? And uh, by the way, you have crucifix. I'm not getting on you tonight, okay? It's a reminder of the cross. I understand that. I remember I was visiting this guy uh, uh, in the hospital of St. Francis down in Beach Grove back then. And uh, I asked him, I said, uh, somebody wanted me to visit him. He's Catholic. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you know that if you die, you go to heaven? Are you saved? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I got a piece of the cross. I said, you do? <laughs> he said, yeah. And he had a crucifix. And it opened up, and there's a piece of wood in there. He said, there's a piece of cross right there. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And so they worship these things. Okay? They worship them. Six. The assembly at Ephesus will know some things that the Bible will reveal to them concerning the Nicolaitans, Mystery Babylon, religious organization. It is a major part of the lie, L-I-E, the lie program. Antichrist will use it for a time, and then he will destroy it. And say, stop worshiping what they say, it's time to worship me. Okay? Uh, God's attitude toward this system is the same in every age. He hates it. Verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Though this is a message to the Ephesus church, Nicolaitan religion will be a problem for the seven churches in the tribulation. Not just going to affect this church. These Jewish believers are to listen to what Christ is saying and heed his warnings. They were to return to him as first love, as their only hope in not letting the Nicolaitan message take root in their church. Now, don't miss this next part. A church's life for Christ determines what doctrine, D-O-C, what doctrine is allowed in the church? Anybody have it? Last page. We're going to end up right on the perfect time. And I promise next week we'll take well, a couple of churches. <laughs> Boy, if you understand this at the beginning here of the tribulation, and uh, the Nicolaitan religion, bell religious system, as we go through it, you'll see things. Oh, yeah, I understand what that is. That'll be helpful to you, I promise. To those who in faith overcome, they are the ones permitted to go into the kingdom's paradise. It will be, as Deuteronomy says, like heaven on earth. The tree of life. This tree first appeared in Genesis 3. Remember, it was that woman. <laughs> it was that woman's fault. <laughs> I have a little fun with that. Uh, evidently you don't. <laughs> in Genesis 3.22, in the Garden of Eden. Remember, it was paradise. After the fall and flood, it D.I.S. disappeared from humans, and it already reappears in eternity as revealed in Revelation. God will bring all believing Jews back, gathered from all parts of the world. They will have access to that pre, P-R-E, pre-fall purpose to rule and reign with Christ on earth. Now let me just say something about that. It was always God's intention to dwell 
among man. Right. Mm -hmm. Always. And one day he will. No, today believers do not need to overcome because we are complete in him. Amen. It's not about our overcoming, it's about our faith in what his work has accomplished. Amen. We do not need the tree of life because we will have glorified E T E R eternal bodies. Notice the difference. Matthew 25. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, the sheep, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. What? From the foundation of the world. Israel is from the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 4. According as he has chosen us in him before. before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. The body is before the foundation right. of the world. Why is there a difference there? Because we're heavenly, they're earthly. Right. Right. Earthly? That's a good answer. Any, any other reason? Why is that? I don't know, I'm asking. You. Oh. <laughs> huh? Before he ever started anything, he had already chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Now that's love. Yeah. Amen. That's love. 